is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. everyone it's that time of the week again it's race spot tv fr prime time streaming live on race spot tv and on the iRacing esports network and this week we head to the us of a new york state to be exact watkins Glen is on the calendar for round number nine of this the iRacing le mans series overcast weather 31 degrees celsius in the air quite gusty as well wind 20 kilometers an hour and uh, well jack this track of Watkins Glen, no stranger to multi-class racing. We have the six hours of the Glen here in real world. We've had the six hours of the Glen in the sim racing side of things as well. Not quite, lo not quite that long as this race today, but it should be exciting nonetheless. Yeah, just the sixth of the distance we're going to see this evening here at Watkins Glen, of course, just outside of New York. It's out of the way for some of the NASCAR teams that were up there just this weekend. Gone Chase Elliott able to get his first win of the Monster Energy NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And of course, this isn't a circuit which is usually related to LMP1's cars, Connery. So it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with quite a bumpy course. The uh, the curbs here can be very aggressive, it's, uh, especially through the chicane, turn number 5A. You gotta be so careful getting that power down as well and these lmp1 cars do have a lot of torque so the final turn could be uh, causing them a couple of issues as that uh, corner is sort of on camber but then is as it starts to drop away the cars get their back ends out and uh, that could smell some trouble for a couple of drivers if they're not too careful but we're heading towards the end of qualifying right now marcus hamilton currently pole position for your lmp1 class followed by patrick wolf frederick evers there are your top three in your in your lmp2 field fraser williamson currently pole position for that particular grouping of cars got neil andrews and uh, jawa coroni as well and in terms of your gte uh, I think we kind of expected this one. Gianni Vecchio, pole position. Florian Denard and Rebecca Pauline will be your top three drivers in that particular field. But we'll get the rundown of the full grid in, in the not too distant future. But uh, Jack, what are, your, what, what are your predictions for this race with uh, in terms of how it will go? I'm not too sure. I think we are going to see a couple of the drivers maybe struggling in traffic. They need to be very careful through the boot. The section from... Uh, turn six to turn number nine. It's, uh, it's a long, twisty section. Not many opportunities to get past traffic as well. So I swear the drivers, especially in those LMP ones, need to be careful because also the camber is very off-putting, especially through turn number nine. A little bit too much power and very easily into the wall. Yeah, very easily indeed. Indeed, as we'll go to a qualifying grid for round number nine. Pole position in LMP1 will go to Marcus Hamilton, followed by Patrick Wolf, Frederick Evers, and Paul R. Williams. We'll round out your front two rows. Further back, you got Thierry Rinson and Pascal uh, Pascal Kushner there, P number six. Dennis Grabowski, good enough for P number seven in qualifying. Julian Ribolau, P number eight. Gabriel Roos lines himself up in ninth. Got Robert Edward there in P number 10. Arcadius Newman, 11th, and uh, Julia Albert, P number 12, with no time set. Looking at your LMP2 field, though, the team bushing racing driver of Fraser Williamson grabs himself pole position. Neil Andrews makes it a all-British front row in LMP2 and an all-French second row for Jared Caroni and Johan Half. Further back, though, Carlo Labati starts himself in uh, fifth place with Bruno uh, Augier in sixth position, Dirk van Tolden seventh, and Victor de la Fuente, P number eight. Tyson Mayer will be uh, uh, will make up an American fifth row here with uh, Robert L. Harris. Got Matthew Hogg, the Canadian, behind them with uh, Carlos, Carlos Alvarez there behind. We've got Jay Farquhar, your lone Brit, to, at the back of the LMP2 field. 
in the GT though, it is Gianni Vecchio once again getting himself pole position. Florian Denard will line up next to him. Michele Ricci, P number three, and Rebecca Pauline will line herself up in P number four. Daniel Cruz gets himself P number five, and Sergio Igan Igancio there makes an, an all Iberian P number five, P number six. Antia Hola there, P number seven. Yannick Lapshin, P number eight as well, about half a second off your pole position sitter in that class. David Pena Jimenez and Jorge Valls will line up nine and tenth. Samuel Roth and Barry Morrison there uh, brings things down to 12th. And then you've got the end of your GT field, David Gibbons and Frederick St. Dennis. So as the cars roll themselves off the grid, we'll get the full pace lap done here uh, and in the books. A little bit of a, you know, maybe a little bit tighter on the field considering that they are doing a full pace lap. But it does give the drivers a chance to get those, uh, get some heat into those tires. And that will be so important right now looking at the weather conditions, Jack. Only a 31 degree tack temperature with overcast conditions. So the sun isn't shining on this racetrack, heating it up. So tire temperature is going to be important. Tire temperatures are going to be very important. Also means that there's going to be lots of grip here at Watkins Glen today. So don't expect the, or expect the drivers to be setting fast laps. We've already seen it in qualifying. A 1 minute 24.8 from Marcus Hamilton. He is right on the money today. He just needs to be able to turn that into a race win. We have seen a season-long battle between Marcus Hamilton and Patrick Wolf. These two have been fighting it out. No Fabrice Cornelis as well. Uh, today, he's once again missing another round, taking Watkins Glen as a drop one. So Marcus, or pa Patrick Wall, sorry, on his own up at the front, hasn't got any backup plan. But for, I think also GTE with Gianni Ficcio, not surprised to see him up at the front. Although Michele Ritchie, watch out for him. He's had one win already this season. I would expect him to be doing extremely quick lap times trying to get another one. It's also worth saying that while it is overcast, it is still quite hot in the air. 30 degrees makes the track temp 31 degrees as we make our way down towards the boot section of the racetrack. So if you're a NASCAR fan, you might not be familiar with these particular turns, but uh, we'll get back to your usual schedule programming in the not too distant future. But uh, this boot layout, it's yet more on cambered corners and bumpy corners as well, Jack. It's uh, kind of tricky to get through here with the limited runoff. Yeah, as, as I said before, the drivers who are lapping, they need to be very careful because they are going to have to go offline to get around these corners and around some of the cars. These LMP1s have an incredible amount of downforce, an incredible amount of grip. So they're going to be able to run the outside line, especially through this bit. This is the toe that you're now seeing your P1 grid go through up towards the heel. And yes, the, the, the boot does have corner names which resembles the parts of the foot. It's uh, very, very easy to remember where you are on the circuit that way as well. So coming through the boot, especially the drivers have to really deal with the off corner cam, the off, off camber corners. You can see as they come down into turn number eight, the heel, they call it. You can already see it just drops off the, the elevation changes as well. They're going to put a lot of stresses on those cars. There's going to be a heavy braking zone up in towards turn number nine as well. Basically a, a wide apex sort of hairpin, wide radius hairpin all the way through here try to get the traction down for the final two turns which we're coming up to right about uh, now and we'll see that pace car just drop off on towards the lane once we come up to the entry to the final turn. Marcus Hamilton seems ready and raring to get going start from pole position in the new LMP1 class. The classes have split themselves up so we'll get three race starts. Pace car dives itself down on towards the lane. Marcus Hamilton holds the field just for a moment, but we'll go green flag racing here at Watkins Glen. Terrible start there from one of the cars behind. That's Patrick Wolf from P number two on the grid, but manages to defend himself the position coming up towards the S's for the first time. Side by side behind, though, uh, between Evers and Kirshner as the LMP2 field will get themselves their race start as well. Still led right now by Fraser Williamson, Neil Andrews, Johan Half. And Half has gained the position over Coroni in, in the first turn. But GT start now. And it's going to be uh, Gianni Vecchio still leading the way, followed by Donard, followed by Ricky. So the top three are all the same. Top four are all the same. Top five are all the same. So they've had a very, very quiet start as well. They're just wanting to get this one started. The only drivers to look as though have swapped positions in that GT start are the two drivers of David Peña, Jimenez, and Yannick uh, Yalapshin. They have both swapped positions. Yannick is up to P8 in class now. So other than that, not much moving in your field. Dennis Grabrowski, though, he has had an incredible start as we see Frederick Evers using the outside line there through the boot. 
Dennis Kaprowski, he's up four positions on the start. He's already in third place. Watch out for him charging through the rest of your field throughout this race. Looking at the battle between Den or Frederick Evers in the 29 and the number 21 machine by the looks of it. It looks as though it's one of the Berlin Simsport cars, actually. Sorry, that's Thierry Renson. Yeah, it is. So, further behind, you see that lovely liveried yellow and uh, black car just make its way through the corner. Side by side, further back in your LMP2 field. Battle for P number 8 involving uh, Victor de la Fuente here as the lights flash on the way up in towards turn number 9. And that is the universal symbol of get out of the way, am I right? That is indeed. You're riding on board as they complete the first lap here at Watkins Glen under the sprint barrier and across the line. Looks as though Victor de la Fuente does want to get that position back. He did lose it. Or he, he managed to get past the driver of Dirk van Tolden. I don't know whether van Tolden was angry at that. Riding on board now with the number 19 of Rebecca Pauline. She's putting the pressure on Michele Ritchie in the number 12 for 2050 Barbonair Racing. Down into turn number one. From behind the Jim Williams Jim Racing Junior car of Daniel Cruz. Trying, but not close enough. Rebecca Pauline also going for the Ford GT as well, which is a very, very interesting choice considering the GTE field. It's pretty much dominated by Porsches all the way through. I'm not even spotting a... Well, I'm spotting one Ferrari further down the field. That's Samuel Roth. But uh, again, the Porsche seeming to be the car of choice for this GTE field, Jack. Yeah, I think it's been strong here this weekend. Or this week, sorry. It's definitely one of the strongest cars. It's got a nice high downfall setup. Do not count out that Ford. If you know a driver who can get it going very quickly, a good setup as well on it. Rebecca Pauline down to the inside into the chute not close enough to get the move done by the looks of it so she is going to stay in fourth riding on board you can or just for a moment there you can see how much of a prototype this car is we have changed position we are now riding on board with the driver of pascal uh Krushna, the driver another driver for berlin simsport in the number 23 he is trying to pressure dennis kabrowski this is your battle for position number three in lmp1 as we ride on board going up the s's we will, and Kushner looking for some semblance of the slipstream, but he seems to be a little bit outpowered in terms of the ERS deployment that Dan Skrabowski was able to do coming up on towards the back straight. But Skrabowski is going to go off ahead, and Kushner, he's now going to smell blood in the water. He's going to close up all the way through the carousel. Skrabowski is going to have a slowdown penalty as well. They'll get very close on the entry to the boots, and Kushner down the inside will make that position up pretty easy. And Gabrowski, can he fight back? Replay up on your screen now with the Gabrowski incident. You can see as he came through the chicane, a little bit too much pace, a little bit of a bump over the grass. That's going to give you that slowdown penalty that we saw him taking on the exit of the carousel. Back to live pictures now. And it does look as though the driver of Pascal Krushner has pulled out a little bit of a gap. So Dennis Gabrowski already losing one of the positions that he worked so hard to make up. Fastest lap of the race so far in your LMP1 field goes to Patrick Wolf. A one minute 26.913. We're just looking on the uh, from the back of Victor de la Fuente right now, and just the absolute train of LMP2 cars behind him. Dirk Van Tilden just giving a little bit of the flash of the lights as they head their way through the toe of the boot up towards uh, this short run down towards the heel. Now you can just see from the aerial view that these cars are very, very close together indeed down into the braking zone of the heel, but no positions chopping and changing just yet. Uh, and if you're one, of, if you're one of the cars behind, you're probably asking, okay, okay, Fancy, let's just uh, get a move on here. Yeah, it looks as though that the driver in seventh position, Robert Harris, has already managed to pull a gap. So fourth, Victor De La Fuente, the drivers behind are going to start to get impatient. You can see there's some pretty big names in iRacing, Tyson Meyer as well, the third car in Ooh. that pack. As we have a car around. off. Yeah, we just saw it just in the back of your picture there. He's actually hit the pit wall. And we'll get a replay of that up on your screen. Jake Farquhar, the number 38 driver. And you can just see him coming to the uh, penultimate corner. Penultimate corner is fine, but he just loses traction coming up through the entry, in fact, to the uh, to the final corner. That's not where you usually see it. Usually you see cars getting loose coming through the middle of the corner as the... Uh, uh, as the uh, as the balance of the car changes, but that's a very weird place to have it. I think he cut the grass on the outside. He did indeed. A small clip on the grass that just shows how deadly it is here at Watkins Glen. So Jake Farquhar has rejoined the race. He has rejoined it in front of your GTE leader. He is back down to stone dead last in your LMP2 category. You can see up on your screen, battle for third position. Frenchman versus Frenchman. Johan Haar versus Gerard Caroni. Two teammates as well, both racing for the race clutch team. Johan Haaf, we see in action in the iRacing Rallycross World Championship. A little bit of a different car here today, Connery, in the, in the form of this HPD ARX-01C in this LMP2 category. 
Yeah, exactly. As those two teams will follow each other around the racing circuit. They have Neil Andrews ahead that they could possibly catch as well. Uh, but at that time, simply aren't looking the case right now from those two race clutch drivers. So uh, they'll hopefully not scrap too hard for position here if it comes down to it. As we look back towards uh, your GT field, and these, this is the train of cars right behind Rebecca Pauline. So you've got Michele Ricci, Daniel Cruz, Sergio Igancio, and Antio Holola, Holola in this one. You've also got him, uh, David Jimenez as well. So this is an interesting battle pack that could get a little bit spicy if these guys go, go side by side. Yeah, looks as though Rebecca Pauline has managed to get her way past the driver of Michaeli Ritchie. You're dry, riding on board with that Porsche 911 RSR of Ritchie. You can see that he is very much trying. I don't think he's got enough to hold on to the tail of Rebecca Pauline. He is now under attack. You can see in that big rear view camera in the Porsche, that looming driver of Daniel Cruz, the Williams Jim Jr. driver. And that lovely blue or yellow and black gear he did yes there was a small touch to the wall there i think by both drivers that's not gonna be a good idea you do not want to be getting aero damage especially at a very aero dependent circuit such as watkins glen using all of the track available out of turn one that's that's every single driver's strategy there connor is if you have a bit of tarmac that you know you can abuse use it Exactly. Every advantage you can get, you might as well take as the LMP1 field has hit the GT traffic for the first time. So Mark Townsend will get himself scything his way through this field up towards uh, the bus stop chicane as well. Just getting himself through there pretty nicely, even though he was it pretty close with uh, one of the GT cars there around the outside of Rebecca Bellini will go. And so will Patrick Wolf in that PRT car behind as well. And this is just a masterclass of how to deal with the lap traffic. He's just weaving his way through the field. Yeah, and they're already on their sixth lap of the race, so it shows how quickly these LMP1s will catch up to the GTE field. Here you go, Patrick Wolf using the outside line. That is easily done. All of the P1s looking like they're going to be using that very same line, the hybrid systems as well on those LMP1 machines, meaning that they can get that extra boost out of the corners, which can help them in the traffic. Looks as though Patrick Wolf has just got the one more to deal with, but you can see behind the gaggle of cars, especially the fat fight between Frederick Evers and Dennis Kabrowski. Evers going from one side of the circuit to the other. All of those GT cars have now been left on the outside. The non-optimal line out of the boot through turn number nine. That's You want to be very careful, especially on the power. And you can just see there, Dennis Kabrowski getting held up just slightly by Michaeli Ritchie coming into the penultimate corner through the last one. Well, Frederick Evers has the same issue with the driver of, I believe, that was Florian Denard. Yeah, but down into turn number one, Evers is going to get blocked once again from taking the line that he wants, so you have to sling his way down the inside, which isn't going to lose him too much time when all is said and done. The gap is looking around about the same, but uh, as the likes of Kushner and Evers now get themselves up through the S's, uh, then we'll start to see things start to clear up as they pass the GT uh, sort of race leaders here, Florian Denard, Gianni Vecchio, and then they've got a bit of breathing room until then they hit the LMP2 field next. Yeah, the LMP2 field looks a lot, there's sort of two packs coming along. There's, you've got the leading four cars, you've got a couple of cars in between, then you've got the trail of cars behind Victor Telefuente, which we saw just a few moments ago. So. Once the LMP1 field catches up to those, and it should only be a few more laps, I have a feeling that we are going to see the idea of that battle being broken up just slightly. Currently looking at the driver of Dennis Grosowski once again. And in fact, no, we're not. We're looking at the driver of the number 28. That's Tyson Meyer having the driver of Carlos Alvarez Benedi going around the outside of him through turn number one. Tyson Meyer going to try again as they come up to the S's. He's looking to the inside. He's going to get blocked. He's going to have to get out of the draft slightly to see if he can make a move. And it looks as though the driver of Alvarez Benedi going to hold the inside. Tyson Meyer to the outside. Blocked in the final moments. Very squirrely on the brakes into the chicane. That time Connery almost had a repeat of what happened to Jake Farquhar just a few laps ago where he just touched the grass and went around. There's also a close battle ahead of this well as well between uh, Dirk Van Tilden and Victor De La Fuente. So couple of things to keep an eye on here as we get ourselves swapped to of that view there of that uh, Dirk Van Tulden. P number nine currently battling for P number eight though uh, he is going to be as they head through the toe of the boot once again seventh time in this event so far for these LMP2 cars. Tulden it's, it's very difficult to make a pass into here but it is possible but he'll stay behind just for now and so will the battle behind to behave themselves as well so 
it's kind of can be tricky to overtake at this racing circuit you can uh, you can do it on the brakes into one you can do it up in towards the bus stop but everywhere else it's going to be super super difficult yeah and that is one of the challenges with watkins glen is the overtaking hot spots because it is a very fast fast high paced circuit you have to do any of your maneuvers on the brakes or in the draft and i think for dirk van tolden might be running in a little bit more downforce than victor de la fuente or just doesn't have the pace out of the corners to be able to get it done for the Torque Freak Racing driver. As you see him coming through turn one, very similar lines running very wide, kicking up a little bit of gravel as they head up the S's. The S's is where you can lose it or make up all the time you need. That wall on the right-hand side as you go up, well, that's very inviting, Connery. I know I've had a few instances with that one, and I'm sure that most drivers have done the same. But Dirk Van Tilden looks like he might have a run into the chicane this time. Victor De La Fuente going to be holding the middle of the circuit. Very sensible idea. Van Tilden getting very squirrely through the chicane and just showing how difficult it is to pass in this LMP2 category. The, you can see that graphic on the right-hand side of your screen powered by ATVO showing you the speed that these LMP2 machines can take through some of these corners. That's already over 100 miles an hour through the chute. That's a very oh, difficult Evers. corner as well. Frederick Evers, Pascal Kushner battling for P number three in your LMP1 field. They were briefly going side by side through the uh, bus stop chicane, but down towards the entrance of the boot they will go. Evers not being successful in that attempted pass over the number 23. You'll just have to stay behind just for a little bit longer. And uh, you don't want to stay behind a track such as this, as we've already explained, because you don't have many opportunities to get yourself past. So Evers, now the strategy has to be perhaps just manage your ERS and uh, try the overtake button coming out on top of the S's. Yeah, and that overtake button, that hybrid boost button, a lot of these drivers have actually said in the past that they like to control the boost manually. That is possible in these P1 machines. There is still a little bit of automatic control, but most of it, if you set it to the right setting, will be in the driver's hands. It's a setting which has been nicknamed Manual, t manual 12. We Ooh. have a car around. That is the Torque 3 Racing driver of Dirk Van Tilden. No, it's not. Fante. It is. That is Victor De La Fuente. What has happened here? We'll just watch on our screens right now, down in towards turn number one. Van Tulden goes for the move down towards the inside. Ooh, was there a little bit of contact there? Uh, can't quite tell from that angle. But uh, that is not exactly how either of those drivers wanted that one to end. We'll see, watch from the back of Victor De La Fuente. We'll see, uh, we'll see Van Tulden head his way down towards the inside right about there. Let's see if they make contact. Ooh, just the slightest of slightest of contact sends Victor De La Fuente into the runoff. It's a very small touch, but that kind of touch at such a high-speed corner, very easy to end in disaster. Victor De La Fuente is back going again. You can see behind him the LMP1 field coming around to make their second go at lapping traffic. He has dropped a long way behind, though. So for Doug Van Tilden, here's up one position, but it's not the way he wanted to do it. Currently looking at the battle between Dennis Grabowski and Frederick Evers. No, this is the battle for the race no. lead. It is closed up. So through the next bit of traffic, they'll go through the LMP2 traffic. Uh, Hamilton hasn't really had the best of speed as he had his way down the inside of one of the HPDs there and out of the final corner. So Patrick Wolf now in a very, very good to, uh, position to challenge uh, the Mavano driver over the next couple of laps if the traffic continues to fall his way. But it looks like they're only just coming through the LMP2 field, so no traffic opportunity for Patrick Wolf to capitalize on now. No, the, the next opportunity, I think, for Patrick Wolf is going to be once, when they once again reach the rear of the GTE field. They're still very close together, running in very large packs. You cannot separate them at all at the moment you can see behind Patrick Wolf and the driver of Marcus Hamilton how close they're running though the lead battle is currently six tenths of a second all that is is one is all that needs is Marcus Hamilton getting held up through one corner Connery Patrick Wolf's got a free invitation into the lead I, I do empathize with you uh, you know getting confused with the battles because Marcus Hamilton Patrick Wolf Mivano PRT Dennis Grabowski and Frederick Evers uh, PRT Mavano. So that's why I uh, got a little bit confused there. And I'm also trying to commentate from the live feed for the first time as well instead of spectating in game. So that one's an interesting one. But Patrick Wolf, once again, right on the back of your overall race leader. Gap was only four tenths of a second last time across the line. And um, Patrick Wolf, he's just looking more and more aggressive as these laps tick by. He's really going 110% at this stage. But uh, is it going to be enough considering how difficult it is to get past? 
Well, considering that last time around, as the laps are going to take over and reset, he was almost a second faster than Marcus Hamilton. Seven tenths faster this time around. It looks as though Marcus Hamilton has got a slight edge, just around a tenth of a second. So you can see that Patrick Wolf, two of the last three laps, he has been faster than Marcus Hamilton, but Marcus Hamilton has had to deal with traffic. Well, they, here we go. Not only are they reaching the front of your LMP2 field, they're reaching the rear of your GTE field. You're currently looking at on your screen, but for second position in GTE. Florian Denard in second position, riding on board in that Ford GT of Rebecca Pauline, the German is trying to get past. She's already up three positions. Can she make it four? Can she make it four indeed? You see the lap time delta is on the bottom right hand side of your screen. Three tenths of a second, three tenths of a second, uh, half a tenth of a second went to uh, Rebecca Pauline as they head their way down towards uh, the heel of the boot now. And uh, there's no sign that Rebecca will go for a move down into that particular corner. But uh, uh, elsewhere on the racetrack though, it is complete congestion as far as LMP1s are concerned because they're meeting the LMP2 field and the GT field pretty much at the same time. You can just see that on your screen. There's the shot of one of the uh, Thrustmaster Mavano cars there. I believe that one is of, Marca of uh, Marcus Hamilton as he heads his way in through the penultimate corner and that most of it is over and done with now as far as Marcus Hamilton is concerned but the thing is the rest of the LMP1 field have to still have to come through on this traffic. It, I'm looking at my live track map at the moment and it does look like a car park. It, it's the only way to describe it. It's just LMP2, GTs and P1s all integrated with one another. Mm. Wow, Marcus Hamilton that time got very close to Rebecca Pauline on the exit of turn number one. You didn't see that one on your screens, but I don't know, I saw it and almost had a heart attack. You're currently looking at the number 18 driver. That is the driver of Paul Williams. Replay up on your screen. You can see it here, Rebecca Pauline running onto the outside using that little bit of extra track. There goes Marcus Hamilton. Very close to disaster for those two. So, so close. Marcus Hamilton well aware of it, though, able to dive out of the way at the last moment, as I believe Dennis Grabowski and Frederick Evers have swapped positions on my live timing. So Grabowski making the most of the GT traffic here to get himself ahead of the... Um, oh, oh Frederick, Frederick Evers is off the track! Frederick Evers is in the wall! Oh, no! He, um, he just looks as though coming out of the carousel down into the chute. Went to the outside to try and get around the driver of, I believe that might even be Florian Denard. No, it's not. It's his teammate. And it, there you go. Replay up on your screen. Now you can see Frederick Evers darts across the other side of the track. Just gets run off onto the outside. Oh. Hits oh. a bump. Goes flying and into the wall. Yeah, there was just simply no space there for Frederick Evers. And the space that was there closed very, very quickly. We'll see that once again as he heads his way through the bus stop. He takes the outside line, as do most of the LMP1s here. Around the outside, they've got the better traction. They can uh, pull that off. But that gap was just always closing there for Frederick Overs over the bump as well. And once that happened, there was only one direction he was going in. Yeah, and that is into that outside wall. Very heavy hit with the outside wall. And Frederick Evers has got no option but to take his number 29 Porsche 919 hybrid back to the pit lane. We also have one of the GT cars pitting. That is David Gibbons, the number 24. Whether it's, This is not going to be for an early stop, though, I don't think. We have another incident out on the circuit. That is between the driver of Roberto Eduard, by the looks of it, and one of your GT field as well. That's a big one. Ooh. Wow. I believe that was the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was the number 22, Frederick Saint, uh, Saint Denis. And let's just see this one coming up through towards turn number nine on the exit of turn number nine. You'll see the prototype motion towards the inside. And not going to happen just yet, but off for the corner, the GT car just gets out onto the grass and just unfortunately collects the LMP1 car as well. There was a LMP2 car collected in that one at the same time. Not sure who that one was, though. It was just a case of he was attempting to avoid the flying LMP1. That was Bruno Aguirre, by all accounts. He is back out on circuit, I think. He stayed out. He did indeed. So he's carrying on with a little bit of damage on your screen at the moment. Julian Ribolo piling the pressure onto Thierry Renson. They are having to deal with some traffic. That's Gianni Vecchio. That's your GTE leader as they come up into turn nine for the 14th time. Around the outside goes Julian Ribolo. Nice move on the traffic. Another car nearly putting it off track as well. I, I, okay. I'm going to be controversial by saying this, but I'm going to say it. They need to calm down. They, it's a 40 minutes. Does he, it, this Connery has a bit of a moment. They need to calm down. They're pushing too hard. 
yeah, just seeing these LMP2 cars just get sideways through uh, through the last turn, just causing a couple of issues for the LMP1 cars trying to come through on them. As the area Ensign again went wide coming in towards turn number one, up towards the S's, they will come right now up through the very, very long right hander on the outside. We're on board with Julia Alberts here of Club Iberia. And, uh, well, they've got this particular battle between Ribelau and, uh, and of course, uh, Thierry Renton ahead. They've also got the LMP2 race leader as well to contend with. Around the outside, they'll have to go, but Albert's going to get very, very close to Julian Ribelau coming down into the entry to the boot, but there's not enough room to work with. That LMP2 car uh, just taking that outside line there, coming in towards the left-hander, so no opportunity for Albert to capitalise. Looks as though Albert is already up five positions in this race so far, Connery, so... They've had a good start to this event. Still for 38 minutes remaining in this one, though. A long, long way to go. Regarding strategy, if those of you are new to Friday Night Primetime and the iRacing Le Mans series, very quick rundown. Your LMP1 field we expect to see in around the halfway stage. LMP2s will not be too long after, between about 30 and 40 minutes into this event. Your GTU field, though, they're a bit different. They can run to about 45, 50 minutes. If they pit now, they can get to the end. Although it's not advised, you want to try and run with as little fuel as possible. Yulia still trialling on the pressure, although it looks as though Julian Ribolo has managed to get away. Top 8 currently on your screen. You can see Top 8 in LMP1 already spread by 30 seconds. Yeah, Marcus Hamilton, Patrick Wolf, Kabrowski. You've also got Kushner as well there. And Renson, Ribolo, Albert, and then Paul Williams. And as you say, yeah, the gaps have spread out by a quite considerable margin in that field as we see a little bit of lapping going on between the LMP1s and LMP2s. But in terms of the LMP2, Phil Fraser Williamson still leads the way from Johan Haaf, Neil Andrews, Drag Caroni, Carlo Labati, Rob Harris, Stip Van Tolden, and Carles Bendy there as well. 22 seconds separate the entirety of the top eight in LMP2. But in GT, Gianni Vecchio still leads the way from Denard, from Pauline. So that has been uh, that way since pretty much the start, except Michele, Michele Ricci has dropped himself back towards P number four. Sergio Ingancio got anti Ahalola as well. Oh, that's that's, huge damage. That's Tyson Meyer, the number 28. Replay up on your screens. They head up into the S's. Was this just an unfortunate incident? Oh, it, ooh, wow. That's not a place you want to have car on car contact. Was anyone else caught up in that one? Not sure. Tyson doing the very sensible thing, getting the toe back to the pit lane very quickly, but very heavy incident there for the American. Yeah, that was contact with uh, Carlos Alvarez uh, Bendy, and he just kind of got boxed in by both Indy and the uh, and the GT car of Michele Ricci ahead of him. So a little bit of confusion, a little bit of uh, the car just there's just not a lot of room to work with. That's the only way I can explain that one. It's just uh, kind of run out of room a little bit. Just contact was made, and unfortunately, uh, it sends himself at quite high speed into the Armco barrier. But this is the battle for P number one in your LMP1 field. We're on board with Johan Half at this moment in time as he tries to chase down Fraser Williamson. Looking at the lap times, he's uh, he's well, he gained on lap number 33 there, 0.6 of a second. But he's uh, kind of that. Uh, Avanid has kind of leveled out over the past two laps, as you can see, only marginal in terms of the gains and losses on those two laps. So a little bit more needed from the driver of the number four if he wants the race lead. Yeah, Johan Haas needs to get a shift on. We've got another car in the wall Ooh. from your LMP2. That's Bruno Aguirre. That's the car that was caught up a couple of laps ago in the incident replay up on your screen now as he heads down into turn number one. Let's find out what happened here. Nice and easy up to now. Oh, just lost the rear end. Yep. Very easy to do. Yeah, exactly, and uh, you would have said with overcast conditions, this would be quite grippy weather. It doesn't seem to be the case uh, with all the uh, with all the camber changes, with all the bumps that uh, these drivers do have to deal with. But uh, Aguero will get himself off and away, and uh, although he has lost quite a bit of time as a result of that one, he's not out of the race, so he can still go chasing after positions if he so wishes. There is a train of GT cars there involving anti -Ahola. There's uh, Agancio ahead of this one. Peña Jimenez third in line, Daniel Cruz fourth in line. And uh, this could get uh, very exciting with how very close that uh, these guys are. They're just absolutely nose to bumper as they head their way into the boot for the 15th time. Yeah, indeed so. Looks as though Antti Hola is trying to pile the pressure onto the driver ahead of Sergio Ingasio. He has got David Peña Jimenez behind. Lovely chopper shot there. You can see all five cars in the line and not too far back is the Williams Jim Jr. driver of Jorge Vasco Bals. 
Oh, okay, Blasco Valve, sorry. Let's get, get it the right way around. And uh, back towards concentrating on the Team Bishop Racing driver of Antiohola. Into turn number nine once again. He's running a nice and clean line through there. He has dropped the driver of Peña Himyev just a little bit this time, which is nice to see. So he might be able to get a little bit more of a gap. As Himyev has Daniel Cruz to deal with and filtering their way through is going to be Marcus Hamilton. Yep, so your LMP1 leaders filtering their way through on this one. Barry Morrison's actually going to head himself to the pit lane. So that is an interesting strategy. Usually we see the GTE cars go a little bit longer, but uh, it can be a little bit more strategic if you're going to pit earlier, knowing you're going to get held up by the traffic coming through on you. Might as well pit and just not have that time lost. I think, well, the way that I'd look at it is you're still going to have to deal with the traffic no matter what. It's just a case of his Barry Morrison getting held up in this big pack. Is he trying to get some clean air in his, is in, in his own class as opposed to... In, on the track in general, currently riding on board with Anti, or well, you were indeed, as he comes through the chicane for the 16th time. All the curb possible, you don't want to use too much because you might go flying, you might do what Frederick Evers did just a few laps ago on this very same section of the, co of the course. It's, it must be noted here, Connery, the grass is very bumpy. It's not like some places <laughs> where it's quite smooth. Obviously, Snetterton in the UK is quite famous for that, for having a field next to it where drivers used to enjoy cutting down the farmer's corn for them. But at Watkins Glen, it's not so much. The walls are very close and the grass is very bumpy. And uh, I believe Frederick Evers is now well acquainted with how bumpy the Watkins Glen grass can be. As, uh, just take it away, Jack. Yeah, it just looks as though coming down into turn number, turn number eight once again. The heel of the boot. And he cannot make any moves. They have dropped a fifth driver. Of course they have. It's driver of Barry Morrison. <laughs> and uh, Antiola comes through turn number nine once again. This is quite interesting to see how the... And he's just stuck in the wings. You can see the driver behind the LMP1 machine making his way through behind. That's going to be Dennis Grabowski, third place overall, and of course, third place in class. Just see the acceleration distance difference coming off the corner. You can see it at the back of your screen. He's cleared one, cleared two, cleared three, cleared four, and he didn't even need all the straight. That is the, so how different the speeds are between the GTEs and the LMP1s. And well, Connery, a few technical dif difficulties for you, but you're back now. Uh, should be all loud and clear now. Apologies for that one, but uh, we'll just uh, take the opportunity to go on to a uh, race spot TV fan immersion lap with one of these drivers. And we've been watching this GTE battle for a while. Why not? Let's go on board with one of the drivers there, Andy Ahola, uh, the Finnish driver, second in line, trying to chase down Sergio Agancio. There we go then. That was a lap on board there with Anti Ahola. Still trying to track down uh, Sergio Agancio for what is going to be P number five out there on racing circuit, but not able to close up just yet. We've also got David Pena Jimenez behind as well. 
as some of the cars have dropped off. We've got uh, uh, Jorge Valls as well. I think Daniel Cruz has had a, I think he's had a pit stop here as well. So a couple of GTE cars just deciding to dive down early, which is an interesting strategy considering uh, how we're used to seeing them go on those long stints. Yeah, and I think maybe people deciding that if they're running in a pack, they want to get out of that pack and start to think about pitting early. Biggest moves and shakers up on your screen at the moment. You can see in your LMP1 field, the biggest mover is, of course, the driver of Yulia Pros Albert. They are down onto the pit lane this time, though. So LMP1 pit stops are starting. Pastel Krushner also going to be following themselves down onto oh. the lane. And actually, Pascal, he missed his box. And that's, that's very easy to do. Yeah, it is easy to do. I had to stick it in reverse gear and uh, back it up so the uh, so the crew can actually service that car. So a little bit of an extended pit stop time we expect here for Kushner as a result of that one. We've got uh, Robert. Uh, we've got uh, Julia Albert as well down on towards the lane, and those two cars will get themselves off and away just fine. The other two prototypes you saw in the lane with retirees, they're not going to come out anytime soon. But uh, looking at the battle for the race lead right now, that is what is on your screen right now. Let's see if Marcus Hamilton decides to head his way in. Marcus Hamilton in. Patrick Wolf also in as well. So on the limit, on towards the brakes into the pit lane, trying to get as much advantage as possible uh, on that portion of the circuit. So this will be very, very interesting uh, to see what comes of this one. Who's going to short fill potentially and who's just going to take a regular service. Let's just see. Gabrowski as well, third position going to be following in, following down onto the lane. I think actually everyone's going to be coming onto the lane this time from your LMP1 field. Of course, 27 minutes remaining in this race. They're going to be running on fumes by now. It did look like a very late decision though from Marcus Hamilton. I wonder whether he just looked rearward, saw Patrick Wolf diving his way down onto the lane and thought, well, well, better follow. Marcus Hamilton away, Patrick Wolf follows. So Marcus Hamilton winning the race off of pit lane. Everyone else still stationary. Dennis Grabowski is going to be stationary for a bit longer, as I would expect. LMP2 mm. will carry on for just a little bit longer. And GT still headed up by the driver of Gianni Ficcio. Marcus Hamilton around about, uh, well, just over half a second faster on the stops, at least according to my timing. So he kind of needed that one, considering how well Patrick Wolf took the pit entry. He brought himself right back up to the, uh, the rear of Marcus Hamilton. So... Hamilton didn't have all that much time to work with, so uh, that good pit stop is going to have him in good stead. Patrick Wolf actually has done the slowest pit stop time of pretty much everyone inside the top eight cars right now, so being a little bit conservative, perhaps? Maybe, you never know. It's not too much slower. An 18.8 second stop. The fastest we've seen is Dennis Kubrowski with the 17, so I would expect to see that, essentially, Patrick Wolf is trying to go a little bit longer. Or trying to use a, have a little bit more fuel. That means he can attack more for Marcus Hamilton. Marcus Hamilton having a shorter pit stop either means he's used less fuel, he doesn't need as, fuel, as much fuel to get to the end, or he's going for a little bit more of a, an aggressive strategy, a little bit less fuel for him to get to the end. He might have to save for a lap or two to make sure that he's got enough. Patrick Wolf, he'll be fine from here, no, no doubt. We do have a battle in LMP1. That is between Julian Ribolo and Paul Williams, they are pretty close on circuit. Currently looking at the number 18 of Paul Williams, making his way through both GT and LMP2 traffic. The car just ahead is Julian Ribolo, the French driver for Simitop Esports. Yeah, as they try to sneak their way up through turn number nine onto the brakes and, uh, well, you can brake quite late for that corner, in fact, because you're still going uphill in the braking zone, so you can just leave it a little bit later than you otherwise would have, now dealing with the traffic coming through towards the final corners of the lap. There's a uh, Michele Ricci ahead as they'll all just go three abreast, three different classes, and they'll get themselves off and away. Not too many problems, but uh, Paul Williams, he's starting to get that gap down now. The car goes wide ahead. That's Florian Dur Durant, uh, Denard. That is going to be P number three in GTE. And what does Paul Williams do now in terms of the ERS boost? Overtake button, perhaps and towards the bus stop but it doesn't seem like that is going to happen as we do have the uh the you know, race leader in lmp2 in and he has to reverse as well oh what's going on with the pit stops here come on get sort them out boys but fraser williams and having to reverse through into his stall neil andrews also down on towards lane same with carlo labati as well so the mistake's starting to settle in in the stops there jack yeah fraser williamson though out and away that's a very short stop mm. uh, yeah that's 
for someone who had to reverse into their pit, in pit box because they missed it. He's out a long way before Neil Andrews. Neil Andrews only now turning off the pit limiter. And well, Fraser Williamson is always halfway up, already halfway up the S's. Carlo Labati is out on a way as well. Off the lane, let's have a look. Fraser Williamson pit stop time. Four seconds slower than Neil Andrews. Yeah, that's huge. Well, four seconds faster, you mean. So 14.2 versus yep. 18.2 for Neil Andrews. Fraser, perhaps he was trying to maybe fill with his fuel and uh, end up missing his pit box as a result. But uh, we be interested to see how he negotiates the race from this point forward. There's no one else that has gone that short on the fuel, apart from maybe Dirk van Tulden. But the thing is, he's in P number nine uh, as it stands right now. And uh, we've actually had a car that might be retiring from this event. That's Robert L. Harris. Uh, he is off the racing circuit. I'll have to try and find what has happened to the driver of number 16. Looks like it happened quite a while ago, in fact, and it might be technical in nature. So that is uh, unfortunate for him, for the number 16, but we'll have the number four of Johan Haaf down on towards the lane now. Along with his race clutch teammate of Giardi Caroni, Johan Haaf comes to a stop. Caroni in the box ahead does the same thing. Expect to be a fuel-only stop. Let's see how this chain or... How this compares with the driver Fraser Williamson. Carlos Alvarez Benedi goes for one more lap. So he will actually inherit the lead of LMP2. And of course, give it a couple of laps and everything will settle itself. And Johan Haaf out on the way, teammate just behind. So those positions do not change. Fraser Williamson has already gone past. But in fact, Neil Andrews, he's going to drop from, he's going to come back out behind those two drivers. So Fraser Williamson is going to re inherit the lead of LMP2 once. Carlos Alvarez Benedi comes down onto the pit. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, Ashley Williamson actually losing the race lead to Johan Haaf there. So that is certainly an interesting predicament there. With Bendy is still the race leader, but that's because uh, he has not uh, come down on towards the lane just yet. So he shouldn't, in theory, fight uh, Johan Haaf and Fraser Williamson too hard. So. We'll see how that one is negotiated. But uh, looking back further down in your GTC field, in fact, we've got uh, uh, Anti Ahola. They're in the middle of uh, sort of their sort of limbo land in terms of the pit stop cycle. We've had some drivers come down early. We've had some drivers uh, that are sticking to this very, very long strategy, which tends to happen in the GT field. But I don't think we're going to have anyone in this time. But I most of the guys I'm looking at are staying out. Uh, right now as we were having a look out the back of one of the Porsches there as they head their way down towards turn number one. Looks as though as well, battle for the lead overall as we're currently looking at the battle between Antti Ahola and David Peña Himnyeth. Your, your battle between Patrick Wolf and Marcus Hamilton has closed down to seven tenths of a second. So somewhere Marcus Hamilton has lost a lot of time because last time I looked that was about 1.3, 1.4 seconds. Concentrating back on this battle between Antti Ahola and David Peña Jiménez. Jiménez is closer this time, but not close enough to make a move into the chicane. Yeah, and that just seems to be the theme for the entirety of the race so far. We get cars close to the back bumper and close to the rear diffuser in, in the case of the prototypes. But the thing is, it just isn't happening right now. It requires a very, very brave move. Uh, to dive your way down towards the inside. But looking from the back of Marcus Hamilton right now, you see the car behind, the PRT car uh, behind. That is going to be Patrick Wolf, the driver of the number two. And you can just see that time gained by Patrick Wolf and then the time lost slightly uh, on the last lap, lap number 26. But an overall theme has been that Patrick Wolf is catching. It's just uh, fluctuating by a couple of tenths of a second a lap. Yeah, and you can see that on lap, I believe that was lap 25, it was a half second quicker than Marcus Hamilton. So Marcus Hamilton obviously getting some really bad luck with the traffic. Patrick Wolf this time getting the bad luck with the traffic. He's going to get held up with one of the Williams Jim Jr. cars. That's the number five, the driver of Jorge Blas Blasco Valls. And through the penultimate corner, you can just see how hard these drivers have to concentrate to get around the traffic. And we saw it at Silverstone, actually, Connery. The driver, Kazuki Umashima, not here today. But he was struggling in the traffic, and well, Patrick Wolf he took straight advantage of it to get the race to get the race lead. Thing is, Patrick Wolf, Marcus Hamilton, these are basically the two best drivers in terms of prototype racing and managing the traffic. So I'm not really expecting any mistakes from these guys as they'll make their way through on towards the top of the X's, and that gap will stretch out 
just a little bit, but that does give us a chance to have a look at how the Ahula and Himenev battle is going. That one's still pretty close, but uh, Himenev hasn't really been in a position where he can just sling one down the inside. Gets a very good run coming through the bus stop, though, in towards the carousel as well. Hug that yellow line on the inside, maximize the track, exit onto the curb as well, but don't go too far there because you can go onto the grass. And then down in towards the entry to the boot, uh, Himenev is... Uh, I'm getting the sense that he's faster at some points in the lap and slower at, at other points. He's very, very good coming through the bus stop. But coming on the exit, uh, the middle and the exit of the carousel, he just seems to have dropped back a little bit. Yeah, he does. It just looks as though he hasn't got quite the same pace. And I wonder whether, that's whether he can't close the gap. And if he can't, that could be a deciding factor in this race for, race for this battle anyway. Out of a position number six in class. The driver who is highest in the standings who has pitted in GTE so far is Barry Morrison. He is down in 10th position. Just four drivers have already made their stop. Barry Morrison, uh, Yannick Lapshin, David Gibbons and Samuel Roth. They are the four drivers who have already made their trips down onto the lane. Everyone else ahead hasn't just yet. So let's see down to the lane in the next 10 minutes or so. We say pits are going to start in about five minutes. No, they're not. They're going to start now. David Peña Himenyeth going to dive out of that battle. Bring himself down onto pit lane. Could be a strategy call here for him in there. Try and get himself into clear air and uh, try and get uh, a little bit of an undercut over Antiola as that car will go up on the jacks. So the tyre is being taken the same time as the fuel in these GTE machines, which does leave, uh, well, does make the strategy a little bit more simple uh, than in your GT3 machines as they have to take the tyres and the fuel separately. But in these GTE cars, the rules did get changed just a couple of months ago by the FIA to say that, okay, you can take tyres and fuel at the same time, no problem. You won't want to take tyres in this series, though, because it takes so long to do it. Your tyres change will actually be longer than your pit stop for fuel. David Peña Jiménez, he's done a nine-second fuel stop. I can almost assure you yeah, yeah. that four people cannot change four tyres in nine <laughs> seconds. However hard IndyCar want to try and uh, argue with that one, they, no, you can't. Yeah, that's where I almost saw that car go up in the jacks, but nope, only fuel taken there for uh, the driver of David Peña Jiménez. And now the cards, uh, well, the, the the ball is definitely in Antiohola's call right now. What can he do in terms of trying to cover off, covering off the move? Sending his way through the middle of the lap now as we ride on board with one of the LMP1 machines down in towards turn number one. That's one that's of Patrick Wolf of Club Diach Pure Racing Team. Still trying to catch the race leader, but... Uh, it's just having mixed success in terms of that one at the moment as the, the gap fluctuates lap to lap to lap. But looking at Antti Ahola now, he's heading his way through the final couple of turns and he'll head his way down on towards the lane perhaps, or no, he's just going to stay out at least one more. The driver that has come down in though is the driver of Michele Ricci. Yeah, he has pitted from up towards the front of your field. Of course, this is going to be his one and only pit stop. You can see him stationary there, the number 12. See how long is he? He's going to have a longer pit stop, 11.1 seconds. It looks as though Blasco Valls as well is in and out. 10.6 second stops at the moment. Peña Jiménez looking like he's going for a very aggressive strategy. He's going to get past both of them before they come out of the pit lane. Maybe not Michele Ritchie, but definitely the driver of Jorge Blasco Valls. Yep, so that's just how the pit stops turn out. Blasco Valls will head his way off of the lane as well. As uh, we see uh, the GT cars coming up through the uh, through the uh, S's section. That's still carrying him in there. There's Dirk Van Tolden in the uh, in the number 26 trying to get himself a lap on the GT car as well. But uh, looking elsewhere though, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to keep a close eye on Antiola to where he comes down on towards the lane. He's coming through the middle of that. As we see side by side there, that's Julian Ribelau and uh, Paul R. Williams, I believe, that are potentially uh, having a little bit of side by side as uh, uh, they'll get themselves sorted out. As it was actually side by side with the LMP2 machine. But uh, their battle will continue on as well. The, uh, the American versus the French. So usually they're allies, but in this situation, definitely not. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. let's not jump the gun here. Paul Williams, <laughs> the ultimate corner. Let's try not to cause a political war. <laughs> yeah, you can just see he is closing up just a little bit on the driver of Julian Ribolo. Julian Ribolo using a little bit more boost out of the final corner, and that boost can be very important if Paul Williams is using it at other sections of the circuit. Running on board, lovely nose cam. You can see how high those wheel arches are as well on the on those LMP1 machines. You can't really see much through them. 
the drivers can see forwards and out of what can only be described as a letterbox in the in the doors and the doors are basically a letterbox as well Paul Williams going running out the outside of one of the race clutch cars that's Giovanni Caroni who's currently third position in LMP2 and Julian Ribble actually this time going to be held up by one of your GTE field this is going to give Paul Williams a good opportunity as they come into the carousel can he capitalise has he got enough hyper boost he does indeed Paul Williams Ooh. from the outside, almost on a grass. We saw almost saw a repeat of what happened with Frederick Evans about half an hour ago. He's going to go right outside. Oh. No, he's not. He's going to get held up by Rebecca Pauline. Rebecca Pauline in the wrong place at the wrong time for Paul Williams. And Julian Ribolo holds on to that one for now. The tra traffic giveth, traffic taketh away as well. So Paul R. Williams, he had the advantage of the traffic trying to box in Julian Ribolo. But the thing is... Uh, Another bit of traffic kind of messed him up coming towards the toe of the boot. And he'll actually have to deal with Fraser Williams in it as well, trying to get past him in the LMP2 field. But he'll get that one done. So that was a huge opportunity for Paul R. Williams. We're looking at the race lead right now because Patrick Wolf, Marcus Hamilton, they are getting very, very close right now. So Mac, uh, Patrick Wolf was able to close that gap as they head their way through the traffic once again. The traffic situation in this in this race is just going to be from this point forward it's just going to be scattered there's no packs of cars rolling around together as hamilton tries to squeeze his way through uh the cars there's actually battle for the race lead side by side patrick full from the grass here towards the heel of the boot and he have to commit down the inside he completely sends it through there side by side off of the heel of the boot up towards turn number nine marcus hamilton have the inside line there's a gte car that could get involved as well hamilton still side by side off of turn number nine but patrick wolf will have to wait another day another lap to try and get past but that was so close the lights were ablaze oh, we have a car in the wall that's krushner that's your fifth position in lmp1 replay up on your screen now coming up into the chicane if this happened here it's going to be a very large accident one two three a little bit of square elite four he's survived the chicane he must have gone off at the shoot as he comes through the carousel he's doing very well to crash there oh wow Ooh. Oh, that is a Ooh. heavy incident. That Anko wall, I can tell you now from personal experience, it, when it says hello, it's usually with a fist. Just running on board with him now, up through towards the entry to the carousel he all come. So on the exit this corner was when, is where things start to go wrong for Krushner. Up over the curb, gets some air as well. Heavy impact with the tyre barrier, but... Uh, that is so, so unfortunate for a driver that was running so, so well. Has to retire that car. That car is in no healthy condition to be out there on the racing circuit. But battle for the race lead is still on. Marcus Hamilton still holding strong right now from the PRT driver off Patrick Wolf. They've only got around about, coming up to around about 10 minutes to go at this point. So there's time here for Patrick Wolf to get this move done gestures towards the inside but doesn't decide to send it like he did uh, on the previous lap just a little bit more patience and uh, and also due to the fact that the move just wasn't on he's showing his nose he's letting marcus hamilton know that he's still there one lap ago when they were having a good old side by side battle he did have lights to play so either he isn't happy about something or he is using the international sign language of i'm coming through out of my way please you can see marcus hamilton he's already he's pulled the gap out to nine tenths of a second you can see on your screens he was very large. He's now like a blob. That time around, Patrick Wolf two and a half seconds slower as they head on to lap number 34 of this event. I think Marcus Hamilton's using more hybrid out of the corners. I wonder whether Patrick Wolf is using a little bit more on the straights. It could well be. As up towards the top of the S as they go, you see that the GT car just flash by on the left-hand side. And that is exactly right, Jack. Patrick Wolf gaining on this straight down towards the, uh, the bus stop chicane. And then up through towards the carousel as well all the way downhill all the way towards the right hand side and tried to get the run off as well but uh that gap not looking as close as it was on the previous lap but uh, uh we've seen this gap fluctuate so so much over this race that uh one moment they're about two seconds apart and the next moment they're only two tenths of a second apart yeah and it just shows that the hybrid boost in the traffic really does play into these lmp1 battles the gap is currently around six and a half tenths as they deal with the driver of I believe that's Dick Van Telden for Torque Freak Racing. So Torque Freak Racing once again, just sitting nice and comfortably, currently in sixth position in LMP2. Nice steady run for them. The driver of Patrick Kirshner, we can confirm, is out of the event, which is nine minutes remaining. There is not much hope of him rejoining this one. Seven more laps for your LMP1 race leaders. That would make, mean that we have around six left for GTE. 
That one's still being handed by the driver of Gianni Vecchio. As everyone else just, or as timing screens are going to reset themselves in, the, in about half a minute or so. Battle on your screen, once again, turning our attention to Julian Ribolo and Paul Williams. Paul Williams using a bit more boost. Ribolo to the inside for turn number eight for the heel. Rani outside is going to try as Paul Williams. Is he going to get squeezed? Ribolo is going to get slightly loose on the exit. This leaves Paul Williams the inside for the next corner. This is a little bit of an advantage. It means that Ribolo has to go the long way around. They're still going to be side by side. But no, Paul Williams finally getting the move done on Julian Ribolo. Nicely done. All sorts of before the penultimate corner. But can Julian Ribolo counteract and fight back on the main straight with that extra hybrid? Lovely static shot. Seeing them drive off into the distance. Paul Williams moves to the inside. Julian Ribolo to the outside. This is turn number one. Can he hold it? Oh, I'm not sure whether he can. Abuse of the runoff there. Abuse of the track limits. But that's what drivers do coming through turn number one at Watkins Glen. Up through the S's once again now. It's the Balfour P number six in your LMP1 class. The runs will even out coming down the back straight right now. And a bit of traffic to deal with as well. Might just make this one even more interesting than it already is. Julian Rebelau is going to get uh, held up here by David Gibbons coming through the bus stop as uh, as Rebelau has to deal with the traffic in the carousel as well. So that one has split up this battle just a little bit. But looking back to uh, what's going to be the battle for... We've got the battle for the race league going on, yes, as they go down towards the turn number one and uh, up through the S's they will go. But we've also got the battle for uh, what's well, going to be Antio Hola versus David Pena Jimenez as well. That one has been going on in GT for quite a while and they're still quite close after the pit stops. But... Uh, some fantastic stuff here comes the run though for patrick wolf down towards the bus stop but it's only good enough to deal with the traffic and not getting himself into the race lead yeah it would have been a little bit too risky to try and attempt for the race lead coming through the carousel for the 36th time just five more laps remaining in this event after this one see that marcus hamilton does have a little bit more of an advantage currently riding on board with third place in lmp2 javad caroni putting the pressure on to the scotsman fraser williamson for team bushfink racing He's going to run a little bit wide through the heel. But he is going to manage to keep it on track. That's all he needs to do. If he can defend from Caroni, he's only got to do it for another five laps or so. And he will be home safe and dry. And another podium for the Scotsman. It will be as well as Paul R. Williams actually got himself past uh, Julia Albert out there on circuit as well. So Paul R. Williams making up those two positions in, uh, in very few laps. So fantastic run for him as he heads his way through the, uh, through the bus stop chicane. There's Ribolau's going to get held up a little bit by the GT traffic. you got Julia Albert there, which the cameras are focusing on right now around the outside. A little bit of damage to that number 33 as well. Yeah, it just looks like there's damage to the front right quarter. Must have been some contact. There's also damage to the rear. So actually, that could be contact with the wall. There's even a small, the slightest rush. Rear wing is almost certainly not straight. Although I reckon that that driver has had both front and rear contact for race cap. Yeah, it definitely seems to be the case. Uh, but we're nearing the, quite the end, nearing the end of the race right now. About uh, what it's going to be by my calculations, about four and a half laps to go uh, for Marcus Hamilton right now, your overall race leader. But looking back, P number eight in GT and P number seven as well, just ahead of that one. That's going to be uh, the battle between Agencio and Jorge Valls. And Val's looking very, very quick at this stage in the race. Five tenths of a second faster than his competitor that last time by. So all these battles are starting to come to a head inside the final uh, five or ten minutes here, Jack. It's exciting to see. Yeah, and sometimes we don't get that. But obviously here at Watkins Glen we have. And for the Williams, Jim Jr. driver of Jorge Blasco Val's. He hasn't been able to get past Sergio so far. Is he going to try and turn number one? No, he's not. Not going to be brave enough to do it. That's got a brave place to put it down the inside, actually, Connery. Okay, you have all that runoff, but if you go a little bit too far offline, there's next to no grip and a very inviting wall, like all the walls here at Watkins Glen. I've seen so many instances coming through turn number one where a car tries to rejoin after running so, so wide, and it just shoves one of the cars down into the Armco barrier, but Vals may have an opportunity to hit into the bus stop. Nope, that's not going to happen. As I kind of feel like every single time I hype up move and it not happening, Jack, I just kind of feel like Crofty on the uh, Sky F1 broadcasts. He does that all the time as well. I, I would have to watch F1 to know what you're talking about. Ah, mm -hmm. you don't watch Formula 1. You don't watch the premier racing series in, in the world. Oh, no. WBC is that, right? Right, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, looking to your race lead now. Marcus Hamilton versus Patrick Wolf. They're coming up on a bit of LMP2 traffic. Uh, this time, and that is that battle for P number two, in fact. So Fraser, William, Ger uh, Fraser Williams and Gerard Caroni are going to have to uh, not exactly make it easy for your LMP1 traffic, but uh, just not make it too difficult either as they head their way out of the tour of the boot, and both cars will get themselves clear by the time the heel of the boot arrives. So these battles will be preserved. So battle for P number two in LMP2, battle for P number one in LMP1 and Battle for P number 5 as well and 7 in your uh, GT field so lots to keep an eye on then inside the final 5 minutes of this event inside the final 4 minutes now Patrick Wolf still locked onto the back of Marcus Hamilton more traffic to deal with on the exit of the final corner as well and Hamilton's just going to have to dive down the inside of these cars down in towards turn number 1 as well but uh, we'll just cycle things back through to Fraser Williamson now and Gerard uh, Caroni as well. These guys have been close for the past five minutes or so and it doesn't, doesn't look like they're going to separate anytime soon so I think this one's going to end in a side-by-side -side as well as soon as the traffic gets out of the way with David Gibbons, he gets himself out of the way just fine but here comes uh, Roberto Eduard as well behind, just trying to split up this battle in terms of LMP1 so again the traffic is kind of denying us right now but uh hopefully in the next few minutes we'll see some battles and are we about to see a pass for the race lead patrick wolf has already tried once wasn't able to do it marcus hamilton has led so far in this race although well the looks of it hasn't had the pace to match patrick wolf the only reason why he's been able to hold on to that position is you ride on board with the number two the pure racing team driver as they exit the toe of the boot just two more laps remaining after this one so not too long another 10 and a half kilometers 11 kilometers to decide this race Patrick Wolf to the outside looks as though as the driver of Marcus Hamilton is going to get held up over Kaylee Ritchie they're going to go three wide as they head up into turn number Whoa. nine they make very slight contact Marcus Hamilton I think going to hold on to this one for now Oh, once again, Patrick Wolf was so close, but no cigar for the driver of the number two at this moment in time. They got one more GT, a bit of GT traffic to deal with, and then they are clear for at least another corner. So Patrick Wolf, he's just been given these opportunities, but he's just not able to capitalize on them right now. And who knows how many we'll have before the end of this race. Fantastic run through turn number one. Could make it side by side up through the S's, which will be a complete death trap considering the GT cars involved as well. Patrick Wolf right on the rear, right around the outside of the long right-hander as well. Patrick Wolf, PRT to the race lead within uh, two minutes to go. Marcus Hamilton's got no hybrid boost left by the looks of it. He's going to regain some as they head into the boot for the second to last time. Into the carousel. Has he got much to answer or has Patrick Wolf wrapped this up? the one moment he needed to in the closing stages. I know in the UK they say that coach and racing, you do not want to be in the lead until the exit of the final corner. Are we going to see the same situation here at Watkins Glen? Here we go, replay on your screen of the pass. You can just see Patrick Wolf use that little bit of extra boost running outside, up through the exit of the S's, turn number four onto the back straight, and nothing that Marcus Hamilton's doing do. And so far on this lap, there's not much more that he can do. White flag will fly as we cross the line this time. Yep, the battle for P number two and LMP2 is still going on as well. Gerard Caroni all over the back of Fraser Williamson as they head through the exit of the boot section up towards the heel. Uh, now, still no opportunity for Caroni to make his way by. Fraser Williamson has been safe and he has been stable at uh, in that P number two spot right now. But heading their way across the line for the white flag are Marcus Hamilton and Patrick Wolf. Patrick Wolf leads the way right now, and I don't think Marcus Hamilton really has anything to respond with. He dropped back on that last lap by about a second, but of course they were side by side during that. But here we go, up through the S's, the boost being used by Marcus Hamilton, but I think Patrick Wolf is just a little bit too far ahead for the number six driver to be able to do anything about it. Looking back for P number two in your LMP2 though, Fraser Williamson versus Gerard Caroni. They're heading their way up through the S's as well right now, and there's still not a gap that Gerard Caroni can go for. He's not even close enough to make a move down in towards the bus stop, so he needs an absolute monster lap here for Caroni to have any chance at pulling off, uh, uh, pulling off a pass on Fraser Williamson. But right now, the race lead is just not going to be there for, pa for Marcus Allen and Patrick Wolf with that penultimate lap pass. He has about half a lap to go, and he can say he's a winner yet again 
in the iRacing Le Mans series. And Hamilton, he's just going to have to settle for second place. There's a car off ahead, though. That's Julia Albert. That's pulled off to the side of the racing circuit. But that's going to be no issue for your LMP1 race leaders. Penultimate corner for Patrick Wolf. Coming up to the final corner now for the driver for Pure Racing Team. Checkered flag out there on circuit. Patrick Wolf, absolutely stunning, takes the race win here at Watkins Glen. Brilliant stuff there from Patrick Wolf with that penultimate lap pass. But Fraser Williamson visits Rug Caroni. That's going to still go on as well through the penultimate corner. But Caroni's not going to be close enough. And ahead of them is going to be Johan Haar coming across the line to take the race win in LMP2. Fraser Williamson will take P number two and Rug Caroni P number three. But looking back, Gianni Vecchio has actually headed his way across the line already. So he is the race winner in GTE. Flora and Rebecca Pauline will actually take P number two in GTE. Fantastic effort from Pauline. We've got Florian Zanard as well, heading his way across the line right about now. And Michele Ricci sliding his way through turn number one, just trying to finish off the race in style. We've got Andy Ola, David Pena Jimenez as well, bringing things uh, down through the GT field. And the rest of the cars out there on circuit, not uh, any particular battles to be concerned about, but what a stunning penultimate lap pass there from Patrick Wolfjack. He could not have done anything better. He sat there for the clutches for 57 minutes of this event. And in the final three, when it really mattered, it just put it down to the inside. And for Marcus Hamilton, I think today he's learned that it's not all over until the fat lady sings. Exactly. He led the way from pretty much the start of the race. Has to settle for P number two. Here are your official race results. Patrick Wolf will take the race win. When all is said and done, Marcus Hamilton, P number two after starting pole position. Dennis Grabowski, P number three. Thierry Renson, P number four. Paul Williams, P number five. Julian Ribelau, P number six. Gabriel Roos, P number seven. Julia Albert, P number eight. And P number nine, 10, 11, and 12 will go to Kushner, Edouard, Newman, and Frederick Evers in LMP1. Cycling things back though through to LMP2, Johan Hart will come away with a race win, followed by Fraser Williamson staying ahead of Gerard Caroni in the closing stages. Neil Andrews will take P number four, Carlo Labati P number five, and Dirk Van Tilden P number six as well as we get those graphics up on screen for you right now. We've got Carlos Bendy as well. Further back through the field, Matthew Hogg, Victor De La Fuente, Bruno Aguirre, and your retirees for your LMP2 field, Robert L. Harris, Tyson Mayer, and Jake Farquhar. Looking at GTE now, though, it's the Gianni Vecchio show once again winning over Rebecca Pauline by about seven tenths of a second. So actually 8.7 seconds there as I get confused between my eights and my zeros. But uh, Florian Denard will take himself the final step on the podium. Michele Ricci has to sell for P number four just outside your podium positions. Antio Hola further down as well. P number five, the European Jimenez, P number six. Jorge Val seventh, Sergio Igancio eighth, Barry Morrison ninth, and Yannick Lapshan rounds out your top ten in GTE. And then the cards further back, David Gibbons, P number 11, Samuel Cruz, P number 12, Samuel Roth and Frederick St. Viennes uh, there with uh, that number 22 driver, unfortunately retiring from this event. So while we wait to see if drivers come in for their interviews, we'll just take a short break here on Racebot TV and the Racing Esports Network. Don't go away because it's the post-race show after this. Mission 22 is dedicated to unite the country in the war against veteran suicide. Bringing our veterans home is every American's job.
Well, welcome back, everyone, to the post-race show for round number nine of the iRacing Le Mans series from Watkins Glen. An overall very, very good race that we've just seen, especially with that last uh, penultimate lap pass from Patrick Wolf to take the overall race win. But we've got some drivers from some of the other classes to come and talk to us today, and we'll have Fraser Williamson uh, get himself in towards the, uh, in towards the uh, broadcast booth right now. And uh, Jack, you'll be taking this one away. Fraser, first of all, congratulations on the LMP2 podium. You lost, you looked as though you lost that lead in the pit stops. Just anything went wrong or just a normal standard pit stop and Johan was faster? Everything went wrong. Um, I picked one lap too early. Uh, I looked to my little and was like, right, there's a shaft in front of me. I then kind of checked when I was coming back out. Um, I ended up exiting, by the time of the end of my out lap, I had three GTs and two P1s all meeting at once. With me in the middle, so it's about a second and a half, two seconds in that. Mix that with sliding your box and well, it's not good fun. And while you also had his race clutch teammate to deal with, uh, Shvar Caroni, towards the end of the race, was that a case of defend with all the might? Not worry about the lead, worry about keeping that second place for the points. You see that as if I care for points. Um, race clutch were running medium downforce higher than mine. I knew... Every time I got to a straight line, I was going to pull away from them, so as long as I kept it going forwards in the corners, which is difficult for me to do, I knew I would be safe enough and in the next breaking zone. Well, you've been running a part season in the RA Single Mon series. Any plans to be back at some point over the next few weeks as we ran out uh, the 12-week season? Depends. Not at Le Mans because that will bore the living daylights out of me. Um... What's next? Is it Daytona Road, then Sebring? Yes, if I remember correctly. So, Le Mans next week, and Daytona Road and Sebring to round out the season. I've never driven the HPD either, so it'll be good fun. And uh, well, before we go and let you rejoin Team Bushwick Racing, who would you like to give a shout out to you today? Um, the whole team, team, Team Bushwick Racing, Craig's set up shop, Pixel Dust for the paints, um, the HPD set that I just used. That's up in Pig Set Up Shop this week, so you can have a look at that as well. Enjoy, guys. And well, that's Fraser Williamson, finished second today in LMP2. Back to you, Connery. Yeah, fantastic effort from Fraser, who has decided to not make a habit anymore of crashing out in uh, broadcasted races. But uh, we do have the driver. We have a GT driver this time. Rebecca Pauline finished number uh, P number two uh, in their class. And uh, Rebecca, you're driving a Ford GT as well. So that is, uh, uh, that is a fantastic effort to drag that machine up as high as it uh, ended up finishing. Uh, how is it for you out there? Uh, hey, yeah... Um... Not too bad for a Ford, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much had the same race as on Wednesday, to be honest. I messed up qualifying just like on Wednesday, should have started further up. Did the same pass on the same person in the same corner, exactly the same way. And yeah, the only difference was that I actually had uh, P2 to fight for, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, traffic was a little frustrating, to be honest. The HPDs got spread out so quickly that pretty much every time I made progress, you kind of had to deal with passing prototypes and you know that made it a bit more difficult but i really can't complain about the finish i really wasn't going to be beating Johnny and not in the ford and not with that qualifying so i'm pretty pleased you, you definitely weren't the only one struggling with the traffic out there it's just it just seemed like anyone in a, in a good position to try and make a pass just had uh, either prototypes or gt car gt cars get them uh, get themselves in the way but uh, so it was very very tough for a good couple of drivers out there today but uh, just talk about more about that Ford GT because it's uh, something that we're not used to seeing on these broadcasts. To be uh, completely frank, uh, uh, how does it how did it handle out there today? Because it's usually seen as more of a, a downforce oriented car, and you have to kind of drive it like a prototype. Is that what it felt like? Yeah, that's why I drive it. I'm still very much a prototype driver at heart, so the Ford just really, really, really suits me. I kind of struggle in the RSR, and I don't even have the Ferrari GT car. I just feel at home in the Ford. It's not really too competitive at the moment, but it is what it is. I love the car. I know how to just set it up just the right way. And I really enjoy it, <laughs> even if it's not the fastest. But yeah, um, it was a bit uh, difficult. I decided to make a couple of setup changes for Wednesday, and I probably shouldn't have. It didn't matter too much, but it just didn't feel as good. But still, you know, 
really happy to be in the Ford, <laughs> really happy to take it to second place again. Wasn't necessarily expecting that today, but so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, next week we're heading to the Circuit de la Sar for the uh, 24 hour of Le Mans uh, racing circuit. We're not going to race for 24 hours, thankfully, but uh, only an hour uh, racing there. Is, the, is it a track that you do enjoy uh, in terms of just the endurance racing spectacle that it can provide? Yeah, there's nothing quite like a 24 hour race, that's for sure. Um, there's just nothing quite like doing that with, with a team, with... Um, all the preparation that goes into it. Unfortunately, I probably will have to give the 24 hours a miss this year, but it is what it is. I'll try to still run the sprint series unless the Ford is too frustratingly slow in the stride, so we'll find out about that. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of a shame. Unless unless things kind of happen, unless I get really, really lucky, <laughs> I probably won't have a team, but it is what it is. Still going to enjoy watching it. Yeah, that's that is unfortunate. Uh, as the the pace you've shown out there today is is very very strong. But uh, is there anyone else you want to thank before we let you go here? I guess all I can do is say the same thing as I said on Wednesday. Thanks to Marie for um, generally being awesome and racing with me. And you know, um, I don't really have too many people to thank. Still private here. Still looking for a team. I'm talking to a couple people. I do hope they're listening. I do hope they watch this. Maybe that might just they influence do. their decision. That would be great, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we do have a good couple of drivers that uh, sort of get noticed on these on these uh, sorts of broadcasts. So um, best of luck for you in terms of that one, finding a team. But uh, uh, fantastic finish there, Jack, for, for Rebecca and uh, P number two in such a heavily stacked field. Yeah, it's a name that not many people uh, would really stand out and see in sim racing. And I think today to quite a few teams, she's, she's poked her head out and going, well, I can fight with the big boys. Let's bring it to them and let's go and get some points. And I'm guessing for you, Rebecca, Neo and SEO is going to be the targets come when they start again in a couple of months. Absolutely. SEO is definitely the plan. Maybe Neo as well. And given that GTE is going to be the next um, uh, pro car for uh, next year, I'll give it a go. <laughs> it might be tough on my own. It might just be tough making top speed for the qualifiers on my own. I don't know how much... I rating farming I really do until then but I'll give it a go I'll try my best <laughs> well there we go and uh, that'll be about all we have time for here on Racebot TV Friday primetime streaming live on Racebot TV and the iRacing eSports network as well we're completely done here at Watkins Glen next week the circuit to the south you don't want to miss that one